Thank you very much. It's a great honour to be invited to reflect on Robert Jackson's legacy 60 years on. It was on the day that Roosevelt died that Robert Jackson was addressing the Society of International Law and he told them that it would be better to shoot the Nazi leaders out of hand than to destroy belief in the judicial process by conducting farcical trials. And that approach has always seemed to me to be Jackson's greatest legacy, proving to the sentient world that the legal process could rise to the challenge of judging both fairly and effectively men who had been not only defeated but demonized. To do so, he had to struggle mightily to overcome two arguments. First, the argument put most forcibly by Winston Churchill that the legal system was not equipped to deal with political crimes of this heinousness. He then had to overcome uh, the other argument coming particularly from the Russian delegates who wanted a show trial in which guilt and indeed sentence would be preordained. To the extent that he succeeded, we principally owe the legacy of Nuremberg, the legacy we're trying to deliver on today, not only in the safety and civility of The Hague, but in war-torn Baghdad, in malaria-ridden Sierra Leone, in East Timor, and uh, shortly in Phnom Penh. We're trying to achieve uh, delivery on that legacy in very different circumstances, so much so that we've had to adapt it considerably. But in doing so, we must carry with us Jackson's principle, the principle of which he was always so conscious that if tr our trials cannot be fair, they should not be trials at all. The stark alternative to justice is the diktat of the firing squad.